Hey guys, I'm going to be finishing my beginner's guides and continuing this on with Artanis. Now Artanis is an off tank primarily used in the solo lane with a risky engage and good survivability, good damage to camps and immortal as well. The meta build is pretty straightforward. It's heavily based off of increasing your damage to non-heroes as a lot of the times Artanis is kind of more just getting quick camps, adding race to immortals, or just trying to be a little bit of a bully in lane, and many of his other early talents don't add to the bully aspect in lane because Seasoned Marksman takes too long to level up, which makes Amateur Opponent kind of a must-pick. This build in the highest rank of play is pretty much the main build, with the exception that the ultimate abilities can be swapped out almost interchangeably depending on what your enemy team comp is. If they have a lot of auto attackers or physical damage, then one suppression pulse is enough to win a team fight. And making sure that you know when to suppression pulse is one of the most important things that you can do. The next thing is the triple strike and the titan killer allow you to have a little bit of late game damage and the survivability from your early shield talents is great. So that is the meta build that is commonly used for him. And finally the maps that he's played 90% of the time that he's played in high ranks is just on Battlefield of Eternity. He adds race to the Immortals and doesn't necessarily need to win the solo lane, but if he can bully a little bit, he can get a camp pretty quickly. And he's still pretty useful in just about everything else that you want to do. So, let's get into what you should be practicing when you are playing Artanis. When you get into try mode, some of the things that I would recommend practicing is head over to level 20, Get used to this build and how much damage everything does and what you need to do in order to do the sort of damage you want to do. And so we're going to be picking up the build that was shown in the thing earlier. And the first thing that I recommend practicing is swaps. And I did a whole video on this and said swap like a hundred and something times. But the big thing that you need to know is that there's several types of swaps. One, you can use your Q and you can use your E while you're using the, uh, the Q. And the E will swap your position with the enemy, oh, if you don't miss it. And the Q just moves your position forward and back. You can combine the two by doing some cool things like moving in one direction and swapping in another direction, instantly pulling them in. Uh, or you can do like a really long swap where you go at the max range and then throw your E and you do a really, really long swap, sometimes referred to as the God Swap. I wouldn't focus too heavily on practicing all the different types of swaps, although it would be really nice to practice those before you get into real games. Some of the things that I would practice is actually his camp taking ability and the time it takes you to do camps. One of the things to know about Artanis is that you can get a camp very quickly, and especially if you're getting the level 1 amateur opponent talent. And know that this resets your auto attack. So if you can see how he auto attacks once per second, you if you do a W after an auto attack, your character actually resets the auto attack animation. So you do an auto attack instantly, the W, and instantly another auto attack. It is a really high burst damage very quickly. And you can see how fast you can blow up something like a siege camp if you auto attack W, auto attack, and then go to something else. Wait for your W to come off cooldown, then W, auto attack, and there you go. So that's pretty much how you would handle uh, an Artanis doing a camp, is you're dodging the majority of the damage and you use the high burst damage of your W to blow up a camp very quickly. So while practicing the swaps is something that you can definitely do to make sure that you don't like miss out on any or you get some swaps that get people into the range of towers, those are all really cool, and I think the fast swap, the one that I'm showing you right now, where you swap in the opposite direction of your enemy and throw an E at the same time in another direction, that fast swap or the quick swap is probably one of the most efficient ones. The god swap, where you kind of go way out here and then you throw this, is actually way more dangerous than you would think, because while you swap the position of yourself and the enemies, you end up in the middle of the enemy team and the enemy ends up in the middle of your team. You might get a kill, but you might also die, which you dying in the, before a team fight's never really beneficial, purely because if you're trying to carry, you want to be alive as long as possible because you might be able to get more than just one kill. So that's why I recommend only doing quick swaps that are exactly where you want them to be. And don't focus too heavily on the swap aspect of R10. It's focus primarily on the fact that he actually does a decent amount of damage and has a lot of survivability. Get used to the time it takes suppression pulse to activate as that time right there could be the difference of someone running out of it. 
So get used to this time that it takes to activate. And understand that on Battlefield of Eternity, his best map, people like to draft a lot of physical damages. It's good for racing. So I highly recommend playing around with this, and feel free to use it while you're racing. If you're racing and you know the enemies are racing at the same time, you're damaging their immortal, they're damaging your immortal, toss over a suppression pulse and just kind of lower the damage that they're doing, and you'll have a higher chance of winning the races. Thank you guys for watching, and feel free to check out my other videos.